Doombots, we have another team review, and it's finally the X-Men. The reason why it's finally the X-Men is because all of the characters that I would consider necessary to make this team kind of work are currently farmable in the game. So, this is one iteration of the X-Men. Obviously, you can put Storm, and there's a character called Beast that you can waste your time on if you like. Totally fine. We'll kind of go over Beast just in case, but this is the core of the X-Men team. This is where they're used. So we're going to talk a little bit about the state of normal three availability, usability, and breakpoints while we look at it. But let's take a quick look to see how the X-Men are going to do in a random blitz fight as we talk about their usability. The X-Men, right? The team. You've probably heard about them. Someone has told you they're the best. They're absolutely everything. And they're not wrong. The X-Men are amazing. Uh, but we're going to talk about availability here. And there's where we run into the problem. About three... Four of the X-Men are relatively simple, right? Wolverine, you get for free with the purchase of a Happy Meal. Cyclops, currently available as a farm in the Raid store. Absolutely phenomenal access to him. Cyclops and Storm are both available on Node Farms, and they'll help you unlock Magneto. So, using most of these characters, you could probably unlock Magneto. Pretty great, right? Then we run into the last two characters. Colossus, who is farmable at the end of the level 70 locked Heroes campaign. So you're not going to get there anytime soon in the early game. And Phoenix is currently the hardest legendary to unlock uh, in that it requires six characters at six star. Most of them you don't even get to start working on until late game. And the rest of them actually don't really have much value outside of the fact that you're using them to unlock this character right now. So... Some people say Maw is more hard, difficult. No, not really. Maw kind of feeds into the way you want to play. Phoenix, you have to go out of your way, with the exception of the fact that if you're trying to unlock Black Bolt, you will probably get a six-star Black Bolt around the time that you unlock Phoenix to begin with. Uh, and of course, Beast is currently inaccessible throughout you know, farming, but you could get him, I guess. He counts. So their availability, they're not very available, or at least this team isn't very available where the characters might be, so you might farm a couple of the characters early just to unlock Magneto, and then to wait uh, for when you get Phoenix, but without Phoenix, this team doesn't exist. I wouldn't use them anywhere without Phoenix, uh, and therefore their availability kind of doesn't matter because all of it is based exclusively on the availability of the one character they need, and that is one of the hardest characters to unlock, so they're not very available. Moving now, we're gonna take a quick look at their usability and where you're gonna get value out of them. So, the X-Men. Where will you use them? The answer is anywhere you want, but they are really good in some places and really bad in others. Again, I'm not talking about individual characters. I'm not going to tell you that Phoenix and Colossus can be used in Dark Dimension 3. That's not a team. That's good character value. We're talking about the X-Men team. So off the top, let's think about it from the different game modes we have. In War, the X-Men, whether it be with Cyclops or without Cyclops, is one of the best, if not the best, war attack teams, in that there are very, very few teams that the X-Men at their core cannot beat. Uh, actually, I think there's only one that gives the X-Men themselves a little bit of trouble, and that's the Black Order, because they're designed to beat Phoenix. So, kind of makes sense. And even then, you'll probably be able to beat them once or twice. So, the core of the X-Men team as a war team they are, without a doubt, the best war offense team we have. There's very few fights, there are very few punch-ups that they can't take based exclusively on the strength of Phoenix, Colossus, and Cyclops. Uh, characters like Psylocke give them a little bit extra sustain. Wolverine gives them a hair more damage, and Storm gives them a little bit more control, so you kind of mix and match. You saw the team that I use, I tend to leave Storm off that team. I just like the extra control that Psylocke gives with a little bit more sustainability but it can go either way. Moving into the next is Blitz. Whatever, use whomever you want. It doesn't matter. Phoenix is going to win the fight for you. And then we have, of course, Raids. Uh, I'd like people to consider the X-Men when it comes to a Raid team as the, the boss node killer. You kind of bring them in, beat the node, and walk away. Uh, mainly because if you want, you can absolutely spend raid heals to resurrect phoenix and repeat the process so that's a great ability if you just absolutely need to progress one more node in order to hit 60 percent or 100 uh that you'll get a little bit of value 
in that, but ultimately because she has to kind of die in order to get the most value she can, you're not going to get too much out of it. You're only going to get a hair of value out of using her, and without her, the entire team kind of falls apart. Even with Beast, sure, he gives them a little bit of sustain and survivability, but since the entire team kind of has to have Phoenix to go around, or else everyone kind of misses a little bit more, you have to have a very strong, not only Phoenix, but rest of the team to kind of carry them through a raid. So they're not a great raid team, but they are a good assassination raid team, much like the Brotherhood. You could bring the Brotherhood into one specific node, spend all of their cooldowns and make sure you get pretty far in it, but they're not going to sustain over time. A lot of that is because there's not a reliable healer on the team, and a lot of it's because Phoenix kills herself in order to do damage. So we'll see how that goes. So there's not much else when it comes to what this game uh, does that lets your X-Men be amazing, although they are an acceptable arena defense team but while you're still kind of building up the rest of the parts. Like I said, clearly you can use like Phoenix and Colossus together to do a lot of stuff. You can even use Phoenix, Colossus, and Cyclops, but that's not the team. That's just three very good characters or three representations of the team. The core of the X-Men team really just well known for being a war offense team with a handful of extra splash in raids and, and stuff like that. Uh, taking a look at breakpoints, and I am going to look at Beast for this because he is a member of the team, even though he's not kind of necessary for most of the content that you would. You have Stars and Garters. He gives X-Men resistance uh, at Tier 4. On turn, regeneration to the most injured ally. Regen is not a heal. It's a wait and see heal. It's okay. Uh, if this character has three or more X-Men allies, this is kind of where people see and go like, this is exciting. Yeah, you've already seen the Doom campaign where you could use him to to get through it, but you can also just use characters that don't require you to have one guy in order to beat a node and get a three star, so it is what it is. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily worth much of an investment, and most of the characters have pretty decent resistance to begin with. Uh, Mutant Enhancement. I, this is There's too many lines of text on this. Uh, there's too many yellow words on it. Basically, make all your characters a little bit stronger. You know, whatever they do, make them do that better. If they kill people, they kill better. If they tank, they tank better, that kind of thing. So, it's a great ability, but it is like a 7 energy cooldown or 6 energy cooldown. Uh, you get an additional stack of regeneration. Sure, I guess it's okay. Not really somewhere I want to be. Volatile experiment. Clear two negative effects from self. Heal the most, the two most injured allies. This is just any ally. So this is him outside of the team or inside the team. 20% uh, of his max health. Attack all enemies. Uh, tier 4 is he clears two negative effects from self instead of 1 to 2 and does slightly more damage. Beast damage is okay. I'm not really worried about it. And Dignified Strikes. Damage. Flipping negative effects. If this character performs a counterattack or assist, it's two effects instead of one. Okay. Works really good with Storm. That's it. No real notes. Nothing he really needs because there's nothing in the game that requires Beast. Uh, or the X-Men really for that matter. Uh, Wolverine. I'm going to skip him. Okay? We're, we're not... We're, we're just not. Cool. Uh, Storm. Storm is kind of a unique character in that some people invested a lot in Storm because we used to need her in order to beat some nodes. And some people still do use Storm to beat some of the harder nodes in the, uh, the U7 challenge raids, like the difficulty 5, 4, because she gets that extra charge. Ride the Wind... Uh, she has a higher chance of speed up and assist now, which matter a lot in raids, uh, especially when it applies to X-Men or X-Force. Again, you're not really using them that often, but since it does apply to X-Force, there could be some extra value on this team. Not necessarily useful for uh, most of her kit. Unnecessary. Storm of the Century, though, increases the amount of damage uh, and damage per charge, and since this is kind of her big, dumb, you know, 10 mana kill everything on the board... It's a big deal to get this many charge uh, damages per charge. She can stack, I believe, up to 10 charges. So this is like a 1,000% extra damage on top of everything else. And this, uh, depending on how strong she is, red stars, etc., etc., this could be a huge turn uh, wipe if you do it right. So worthwhile if you're using Storm for a specific reason. But on the team, the next one gets a little bit better. Ice Storm is her control. Uh, they both expend charges, so you're either trying to do a ton of damage with her, or you're trying to do a ton of control. Uh, 
Uh, basically, with this setup, attacks all enemies and applies slow to everyone. Uh, if charged, chance to apply slow is increased by 20%. Or 25%. Uh, additionally, 10% chance to apply stun each target becomes 15. And then chance uh, is applied by 10% per charge. So if she has 5 or 6 charges, you have a pretty decent chance to kind of power it through. If Beast is an ally, you only have a 50% chance. Nothing changes that. It doesn't cr uh, get stronger with Tier 4. So if it became 100%, then we would definitely see a use of her in Beast and Raids. Uh, this attack has 100% extra focus and cannot be dodged. So if you take her and Beast and keep them as a separate entity, now we're talking about what the X-Men Raid Team or the X-Force Raid Team might start to look like. But for now, this is kind of where we line up. Uh, and as for Shocking Blow, it just gains a charge when she attacks. Unless Beast is an ally, then gain two charges, uh, which is phenomenal, up to a maximum of 20 with the Tier 4 investment. And if you're trying to get that big, dumb attack, that's the way to do it. Now we're going to move into the core of the X-Men team. We're going to start with Psylocke. Uh, Psylocke, I reason I like Psylocke, is right here. She doesn't really need much, but on spawn, always gain evade and counter. That's actually incredibly helpful for War to make sure she doesn't get, oops, I got killed in one shot by a character. Except CM. I don't really see too many times where CM's going to target her and kill her immediately. Or you're going to even run into that. And even if it does, it's a hard fight, you know. Uh, but on spawn, she has a chance to gain it. And then when any X-Men character goes below 50%, they get evade and counter. She can't be disrupted. Awesome. Which is interesting. Because she, you'll see the next attack. Uh, Astral Butterflies. Transfer two negative effects from self and each ally to primary target. Transfer one additional negative effect from self and each X-Men to primary target. This becomes all negative effects from self and each X-Men to primary target. But it does take negative effects off non-X-Men characters. So she becomes a very useful uh, additional character if you're using a hybrid X-Men team with maybe a healer. Uh, like Minerva, we'll say. So it's pretty useful. Attack primary target for piercing damage. This attack cannot miss. This is kind of the big deal. She can throw all those debuffs off people. Let's her counter characters like Magneto very well. Pretty decent overall attack. Uh, but the transfer all negative effects and the extra piercing damage is a worthwhile tier 4 investment if for some reason you're noticing your X-Men isn't automatically just winning every fight they go into. A telekinetic armament. Attack primary target for 160% piercing damage, chain, blah, blah, blah. Clear two positive effects from each target. If this added to the number of positive effects that were cleared, I would say this is an absolute buy. But since it's just damage, I don't really care for it that much. Um, she is a pretty decent damage dealer, and it is piercing damage because it's all psychic, but it is what it is. And then basic is just damage, no real notes on that. Psylocke, pretty useful character, but she is kind of a uh, basically a glorified passive with a, a debuff clear. So use what, invest in her as you see fit with a character that's job is just to make sure your other guys don't die that well. She's basically a tank. Cyclops, um, I call him the win more character. Uh, any fight your X-Men were winning before, they're going to win faster with Cyclops because of how he works. On turn, he gains, uh, or any X-Men turn, he gains two charges. Notice I did tier 4 this uh, because it increases the total number of charges he gains and how quickly he gains them. Uh, when an enemy attacks Ally Phoenix or Dark Phoenix, 50% chance for him to attack. If he doesn't, Wolverine attacks, uh, which is another reason why you might want to have Wolverine on that team. On Ally Phoenix death, gain offense up, fill an ally Wolverine speed bar by 100%. Alright, well this throuple is, is starting to weird me out a little bit, but uh, other than that, yeah, you're going to see why this maximum charge matters. You're going to see why the extra damage from Wolverine matters uh, when we look at his ultimate. Uh, attack all enemies for all of the damage and apply slow. Damage is increased by 25% per charge. Now, if you just invest in that one ability, you're going to guarantee the time by the time he does it, assuming no one died, that he's going to have the maximum number of charges. So it's about 600% damage with all the charges, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's ton. It's a ton of damage. And it applies slow for two turns. I'm sorry, it becomes slightly more. So this is where things get interesting. You only get an extra 50% damage. So if 600% damage wasn't enough to kill everything, is 650 the right number? I don't think so. He does a lot of damage. Just put more gear in him. Don't worry about this tier 4. But these slow for two turns. Again, if they're dead, they really don't need to be slowed. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. 
uh, to me, my X-Men. This one is kind of really important, or it's completely irrelevant, because it's based exclusively on the strength of your Colossus and your um, Phoenix. Apply Taunt to the two most non-injured, non-summoned targets, whatever. Call an ally Wolverine to attack the most injured. 75% chance to call any ally to attack the second most injured target. With the tier 4, uh, it will guarantee that that extra attack is called. Then, we'll scroll up. Attack primary target for 300 or 350% damage. I like this because calling Wolverine as an attacker is not great because Wolverine sucks. But you really want to get whoever that other character is. And if it's someone like Phoenix or Psylocke or even Colossus, there's a chance it actually does real damage to the character. So this is a good investment. But again, if you have a really strong Wolverine, this become, you don't really need it um, because he's going to do enough damage anyway. It's, if you have a really strong Phoenix or Colossus, then you might want to get a little bit extra value in your punch-ups. I don't know. It seems like it's great, but it also just seems like you may not want to spend the 220 uh, credits to do it. Uh, and then Optic Blast, it's basic that applies defense down. If this character has one or more X-Men ally, they always apply defense down. Hint, hint, he always has one or more X-Men ally. It's always going to apply defense down. And it's just slightly more damage. I've always said if you get to the point where you're basicing with Cyclops, something went terribly wrong in the fight. Um, I wouldn't necessarily think that extra 50% damage is too much of a, a big deal. So, nothing really needed there. Basically, these this this is it as far as what Cyclops needs to feel really powerful on the team. Everything else is just kind of a luxury based on what you want to do. Moving to Colossus. Colossus is, with Phoenix, Colossus is easily the best tank in the game. Without Phoenix, he's kind of terrible. But let's take a quick look at what he needs to make that work. Uh, the tier 4 in his passive on spawn. If Phoenix is an ally, gain defense up for two turns. While charged, when attacked. There's so much, so much text on this. <laughs> Attack that counterattack that enemy. On spawn, generate one ability energy for self, then clear charge. On spawn, if Phoenix is an ally, gain defense up and apply defense up to all X-Men. That's huge. Uh, when negative effect is applied to X-Men, gain one charge up to a maximum of five while charged when attacked. Just counterattack for more damage. Whenever an enemy ally drops below 50% health, he gains a taunt up to a maximum of two, which comes relevant when you see his next ability. When he has defense up, he gains a ton of resistance. You guys know if you've ever fought against him, it's impossible to strip buffs or put stuff on him. He gains 15% max health. They gain 15% max health. Uh, this is... Pretty much the only ability I would ever recommend tier 4 -ing. The other ones are kind of unnecessary because it's impossible to kill them anyway. Uh, enduring Protection. Increase the duration of positive effects on self by plus 2 up to a maximum of 5. Gain 2 death proof. Gain 2 charges. Now this won't increase the number of death proof when you tier 4 it. This is just all of the other effects. Since most commonly the effects that are on him are defense up and stealth because of how Phoenix and the, the way the turns work. Um... It's not going to make a difference. That extra turn is not going to matter of anything. Even if you put taunt up to three turns, the next turn he's just going to taunt anyway. So it really doesn't make too much of a difference. If it increased the number of charges, I'd say maybe. But this ability, totally unnecessary on Colossus. Uh, altruism, game taunt, game counter. Apply two deflect to self and X-Men allies. Apply deflect to all other allies. If Phoenix is an ally, he gains taunt for two turns. Kind of like how Juggernaut and Magneto work. Uh, his tier four is gain two counter. <laughs> And we'll move on to his basic, which is actually pretty fun. Uh, it, you know, apply offense down for two turns, attacks for uh, 290 or 340. He does more based on the charges on his counter, and his counter attack is based on the damage here. So if this is high investment, the counter attack will actually do something. But uh, ultimately, still just damage on a character that's job is via tank, so totally unnecessary. You'll hear people swear by it, those people are wrong. Now we have Phoenix. Uh, she's pretty much anything. All of it. Doesn't really matter. She's that good. But we'll look at it. Basically, every time you put an investment in one of her abilities, Dark Phoenix gets the investment. That's what you need to know. So notice I don't have Tier 4s in her basic. Neither does Dark Phoenix. That's the reason why. You get two for the price of one. I'll go over these as quick as possible. Phoenix Rising. Whenever an ally taunts, she gains taunt. If Beast is an ally, it's two turns. Whatever. Gain 30% damage, X-Men gain 30% damage, gain 30% health, blah, 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 blah. You know how that works. As for Dark Phoenix, on spawn, attack all enemies, 
for 250% damage, apply defense now for two turns. This is the reason you're tier 4 in this ability. It is a ton of damage and two turns of defense down. Very relevant. Moving back to her regular uh, Phoenix Force. Attack primary targets for 400% damage, clear all effects. This is a single target. Gain a trillion, bajillion, vanillion extra focus for this attack. Uh, again, clear all positive effects of the buff you get from Mini Phoenix, but when you take a quick look at Super Phoenix, you get AoE everybody for 400% damage, clear all positive effects, gain 50,000 extra focus, this attack is unavoidable. The clear all positive effects and get plus 50% damage is really what you went for on this one. So it's another one where you're not seeing it as much in the front end as you are in the back end. Bestow Light, same kind of thing. Apply Stealth to allies for two turns. You get slightly more healing. Uh, basically, it redistributes 25% of her max health to all allies. And every one of those allies gets 10,000 extra health. You know how this stuff works before. If there are no allies, she kills herself. And all negative effects on every ally go to her because she's going to die anyway. It doesn't really matter. Then again, another ability where you see why it matters more in this. Because Vitality Drain steals extra 5%, going to 20% health from all enemies and redistribute itself. Regeneration all allies. Regeneration again to X-Men. The reason this is relevant is, the dip is because uh, stealing uh, is percentage damage. So it's not going to matter how much number the health on that character has. Uh, it's going to say, are they under 20% health? Yes, they're dead. Do they have death proof? Doesn't matter. It gets around death proof. It's huge. The extra 5% is a huge amount of health based on who you're fighting, especially in game modes like Dark Dimension or in harder raids where the characters are scaled up significantly higher. You technically don't even have to get them to red health um, and then pass through all the other steps as long as they're just close enough to dead, she'll take them out without you worrying. Kind of a big deal. Uh, and then Immolation, I'll just look at this real quick. It's just extra damage on both sides, which is why I didn't invest in it, because it do she does a ton of damage to begin with. I don't really care for it, but I know plenty of people who have because they like to see big shiny numbers. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, that's pretty much it for breakpoints. We're going to kind of draw this close. There's no way I can give this team any other rating other than an S team, because... Uh, when you when I want to rate a team, I, I kind of look at two things. How usable they are throughout the course of the game and how good they are at that, at that at what they do. They are the best offense team, or maybe tied with the Black Order as the best war offense team. They automatically win in Blitz. They will be able to destroy any raid node at any time as the full team, or you can kind of change it. It's just they won't have sustained, so that's a big deal, and that's something you might need access to when you start pushing for harder and harder and more difficult fights. As PvP becomes more popular, you're going to start seeing more comps involving Phoenix, or unless she gets banned all the time. And then you get a little bit of extra value out of characters like Beast and Storm when you're putting together some hybrid teams. So overall, this team is just phenomenal. Probably one of, if not the best team overall in the game and how they work together and what they accomplish. But, uh, you know, comment below, let me know. Let me know if your X-Men is stronger than mine, and that matters uh, for anything you're doing. Because you notice my X-Men team is not that particularly strong compared to others, and I don't run into any issues in war. I can punch up plenty against X-Men, uh, you know, Colson Shield teams is where, really where I save this team for. So, that's pretty much it. But come below me, you know, but your X-Men, let me know if you actually use Beast and if he matters. Or if you're using Beast and Storm with some crazy comp. That's what I want to hear about. Let me know what your Beast and Storm comps look like. Other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.